Tally ho there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Hope you're all doing well out there. Today, I'll be doing my six month, can you believe it, six month review of the Dell XPS 15. Now, I was one of the first people to actually get this computer, and I have done around 20 videos on this computer. And if you haven't seen my other videos, check them out. I've got gaming videos, I've got how to upgrade, how to install Windows. I've got three month reviews, one month reviews. Everything you want to know about the Dell XPS 15, I have a video on. Check out my playlist, I'll leave a link in the description. And throughout this video, I'll be leaving cards up the top here as I go through different topics on videos about those topics. So this is going to be my most comprehensive video. I'm going to address some FAQs, questions I get asked all the time. I'm going to go through my cons, how it stood up over six months. Let's just crack on and get into it. So as I said, I've had this for six months now. I still love this computer. I still have that new car feeling. It's absolute pleasure to use. I love using it. It has been absolutely bulletproof and I still get a little buzz every time I open up and look at that gorgeous 4K screen. There are no signs of wear on this computer. It just stood up to six months of my hard use. I'm pretty hard on my gear. I cannot notice any wear and tear on it whatsoever. There's no scratches, dents. It still looks gorgeous. So in terms of how tough and rugged it is and how it stood up over six months, it gets a tick there. Okay, first of all, we'll just get into the cons. I guess some of the negatives, I can't really think of any really bad cons. I don't like the power cord. I don't like how it goes in. It's a bit looser now. It's an accident waiting to happen. Someone's going to knock it and wreck that AC jack. Um, I would love a magnet solution. This is something I really want. I, I, I really dislike this. Now, in my three-month review, I said it had a sticky keyboard, or actually not a sticky keyboard, the space bar was a bit sticky and spongy. Well, that seems to have righted itself. I don't seem to have that issue anymore, and I'm keeping an eye on it. If anything, that spongy space bar issue is gone, but it's definitely something I'm going to keep an eye on. The fingerprints, yes, it's a fingerprint magnet. For me, it's not a big deal. But I have to tell you that this thing does collect fingerprints and you will have to wipe it down once a month with 50-50 water vinegar solution. Now in my three month review video, one of my other cons was it doesn't support NVMe boot mode. Now there's been a lot of conflicting information about this but as far as I understand it now, I've had contact with someone from Dell and that if you set in BIOS the SATA operation mode to AHCI, it will allow the N.2 SSD to run in its native mode. So if it's a NVMe M.2 SSD, it will run in NVMe mode if you set it to AHCI in the BIOS because that allows it to run in its native mode. I know that sounds a bit weird, setting it to AHCI you would think that's not NVMe but that's just how it is it allows it to run in its native mode later on in the FAQs I'll touch on some of the faults and issues people have had with this computer most of them have been addressed with drivers and BIOS updates so I'll address that later now let's get on to the pros I think the best thing about this for me is the 4k screen the full HD screen is beautiful too but this 4k screen it's on another level it's the most gorgeous screen I've ever used, 100% Adobe RGB color gamut. It's great for video editing. Yes, it uses more battery than the 1080p version, but in my books, it's well worth it. The screen hasn't deteriorated, looks as good as when I bought it. It's very bright in actual fact. Inside the house at night, I only use it 25-50% brightness. So that just gives you an idea of how bright it is. It is a really good screen and the 1080p screen is good too and you get the extra battery life with that. Its building design is gorgeous, it's beautiful design, carbon fibre finish around the keyboard, the rest is made out of aluminium. The aesthetics and design of a computer is something that is very subjective and personal to you but for mine aesthetically this is one of the best especially with that affinity edge display. It really looks modern and the MacBook with its slightly bigger bezels does look a little dated but that's up to you to decide its size and weight it's the smallest 15 inch laptop Dell claims I'll show you here if it's in a 13 inch sleeve that I bought for my MacBook Pro so 
you can see how small it is. Fitting in a 13 inch is a great engineering achievement. And for such a powerhouse of a computer, the size and weight is a real pro. My next pro is its power. It is a machine. It is a beast. Skylake processor. I have upgraded this to 32 gigabytes. I put a Samsung 950 Pro SSD in it. This thing flies. Great for video editing, Premiere Pro, After Effects, anything you throw at it. This thing is nearly as good as a desktop and actually it's better than a lot of desktops. Unless you have a real beast of a desktop, this thing will give it a run for its money, no problem. It's a gaming beast too. And just on gaming, I've got videos on the gaming of course. Just to quickly sum it up, you'll be able to play AAA titles, 1080p, no problems and something like say for example fallout 4 i can get around 60 frames per second on medium to low settings and i can get around 30 frames per second ultra settings so 1080p AAA titles no problem on this computer and it's not a gaming laptop I think it's more of a video editing productivity laptop but it can game and you could buy this as a portable gaming laptop also one of the pros is battery life now if you have the full HD version you're going to get around 10 hours battery life if you have the 4k model you're going to get around I'll settle on about six hours. That's what I've been consistently getting, about six hours battery life. There is no other 15-inch 4K screen laptop on the market that gets six hours battery life. So a lot of people, oh, it's got rubbish battery life. There is no other laptop, 15-inch 4K screen that gets over six hours. So really, it is the benchmark for 15-inch 4K screen battery life. And if you want any extra battery life, get the full HD version, you're going to get 10 hours. So that's more than the MacBook Pro 15 inch. Value for money, this Dell XPS 15, all right, it's not cheap, but for what you get, it's really good value. Now I get a lot of questions. I'm just summing up some of the questions I get all the time. I'll get asked about this black flickering screen and this and that. Now, as I was saying, so some of the FAQs in that Reddit post, of the known issues I've gone through them all and I've discounted the ones that are just faulty units doesn't matter what device you get some people are going to get faulty units so I've disregarded those issues and all this flickering of the screen and video and all this most of that has been addressed with BIOS updates and the Intel driver updates because Skylake pretty much every Skylake top had these issues you have the sticky keyboard the spongy keyboard now that is an issue that a few people have had and I've mentioned before that my spacebar was like that it sort of righted itself I don't have that issue anymore apparently Dell support's been pretty good to those people that I know that have had a keyboard problem and it's been sorted and it's a known issue so just watch out for your keyboard keep an eye on it and if it and if it is spongy and there's something wrong with the keyboard just get on the support straight away Hopefully they've improved the quality control on those keyboards. All right, so some of the frequently asked questions are, is it good for video editing? It's born for video editing, this thing. Just believe me, it's great. Premiere, no problem. Um, should I buy a MacBook Pro now or wait for the new one or the XPS 15? Um, I get asked that a lot. Well, if you're talking about now, I'll definitely get the XPS 15, no contest. Now they will have a refresh in the middle of the year they say the new MacBook Pros will come out. It's only going to be a Skylake refresh so really I would still say the XPS 15 would be the better buy because it's going to be a lot cheaper and pretty much the same specs as there's no new Intel processor until the end of the year. So, so it's pretty much just going to be a spec bump, it may get a better keyboard, may get a better screen on the Mac but really it's just going to be a refresh to pretty much match the specs of the XPS 15. I will be one of the first people to get the 15 inch MacBook Pro when it comes out. So subscribe because I'll be doing a comparison between the XPS 15 and the new MacBook Pro when that comes out. I'll be doing a lot of comparison videos on those two computers. But I expect it just to be a parody spec bump and in my book the XPS 15, Dell are always doing deals. It's much more better value and I would still go to XPS 15. Another thing I get asked a lot is, uh, should I get the Razer Blade or the XPS 15? Well, if you're a gamer, get the Razer Blade. It's got a 970 in it. That's the only advantage the Razer Blade has, is it has a GTX 970. Otherwise, pretty much the XPS 15 is around the same size, yet it's got a 1.6 inch bigger screen. It has a better screen. And considering that the Dell XPS 15 is a 15 inch laptop and the Razer Blade is a 14 inch laptop, yet they're the same size and the XPS is actually thinner. Um, 
I would get the XPS 15 unless you are a gamer. So if there's any questions you've got about this, leave them down there in the comments. Six months, I still love it. It's the beast. Best piece of tech I've had in a long time and I definitely recommend this computer. You'll love it. If this video is helpful, give me a thumbs up there and until next time guys, tally ho.